Now, it may seem a weird title to say that there's confusion about Waffle using copy on write or redirect on write. When you Google for the Waffle file system and want to find out how it works, very often it's mentioned that Waffle is a copy on write file system type. Not just by anybody, but definitely also in NetApp documents it reads that it is copy on write, especially with regards to snapshots. By the way, this also goes for a ZFS, a lookalike of Waffle. To be honest, and I'm always very careful, I must say that I have my doubts about this statement, or at least I'm confused, and I'll tell you why. Let's do a quick recap on the concepts of the two different methods. Let's first look at copy and write, which is a technique which is very popular in programming to manage shared data. So multiple programs simply use the same data set until one program starts to modify it. Then the original data will first be copied so that every program will have its own version only when the data gets modified. Uh, it can best be explained, uh, I think, by this conceptual example. Now the subject is the program or the database or whatever other entity that wants to change the data. So when the data needs to be updated, say X has to become Y, then first the block with X has to be read. Then the block has to be copied to a different location. This is the first write. And finally, a new value, Y in this case, will have to be written to the original location. That's the second write. So the general idea is that the data is first copied away before it is overwritten. So copy on write. In a redirect on write situation, the updated value will always be written to a new location and the original data remains untouched. Now, what if we translate this to waffle? Now, this is a simplified layout because I left out the indirect pointers, which would give me two extra layers. I've put the actual image in the description so you can have a look at it if you like. But the idea is the same. So at the bottom, we have the data of a file which is reachable via pointers in the inode, which in turn is accessible via the root inode. Again, take into account we left out two layers. So we see two files and each file has two blocks of data. So imagine we want to change D into E, and then in Waffle, the block D is not modified or touched in any way. The only thing that happens is that E will be written to a new location on disk. And since the E is the replacement for D, the pointer in the inode should be modified. However, Waffle never updates a block, but always writes new blocks. So there will be a new inode with pointers to C and E. The same goes for the layer above, and so on. And finally, when we get to the root inode, this is the only block in the entire file system that will actually be overwritten. The reason why this is a very nice technique is that right before the overwrite of the root inode, if the system would crash, then the old path to the data is still valid. So if the system is back up, the procedure can repeat itself. And when the root inode is finally overwritten, then the uh, blocks that are no longer in use uh, can simply be freed. In official terms, we should say that then when this happens, the consistency point is complete because we now have a complete new view of the file system. Now, this is definitely not copy on write, but redirect on write. Now, what about snapshots? Many people speak of cow snapshots, and I think this is where the confusion lies. When you create a snapshot, the root inode will be copied, and that copied block will be the snapshot, but it's still not copy on write. It's simply a copy. Now what's more, the new snapshot is part of the file system. If you would create a second snapshot and restore the first, then you would lose the second snapshot because it wasn't there when you created the first one. So you could safely say that every snapshot that is created is part of the volume file system structure. So the snapshot and the active file system share the same blocks. The snapshot is a read-only copy of the root inode. So you'll never be able to go in and change anything inside the snapshot. In the active file system, however, you could change D into E, but that would simply create a new block, just like we discussed. The only difference is that the snapshotted block cannot be freed, because it's part of a snapshot. And at this time, the snapshotted block starts taking file system space. Initially they don't, but anyway, I haven't seen any copy on write yet. Uh, so to my mind, I would say that Waffle is a redirect on write file system. And I'm sure some of you will disagree with the above, and I hope you let me know in the comments. And if you have time, you can have a look at some links in the description, one of which is a NetApp document that says Waffle is copy on write. So please form your own opinion.